Anyway, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Spartacus and Arrow, and now you're here. I mean, what, 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 what's different between what uh, this and what you've done in the past? Oh, there's nothing different. I mean, my career has sort of been fortunate enough to sort of be in. You know, I mean, Spartacus was a groundbreaker for stars, you know, I mean, stars didn't really exist on the map and, and Spartacus was one of the shows that was so cutting edge and it's, you know, in every aspect of, of, of I mean, I, I had, I had, uh, I went to the Wolf of Wall Street premiere in New York and I had, uh, I had uh, Martin Scorsese tell me that he was influenced by Spartacus in terms of how far he took this Wolf of Wall Street. You know, which was kind of extraordinary. But you know, I mean, it's, so that was cutting edge. And then, you know, I mean, Arrow brought something new to CW's network. You know, it was sort of a younger demographic on that channel, and now it's a broader demographic. And you know, just the standard of television in general is starting to skyrocket. You know, and HBO has been the king at the top there, but now all these players are coming in. You know, and MTV is one of the players, and they're throwing their chips on the table with with Shannara and they're saying well you know what if eight years ago Peter Jackson decided he could make Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit for the big screen we're going to make Shannara for television you know and, and, the, and the good part of that for the audience like because I've been part of long episodic television series is you get so much more story and as an actor you get to create the character so much more richly over time. Talk about those characters please. Yes. Well, I play Eritrea, and she's one of the few humans um, that exist uh, in the Four Lands now because it takes place in an apocalyptic world where most humans have already extinguished. Um, and I'm from a rover clan, and rovers are a nomadic group of thieves that they just roam around the Four Lands, obviously stealing and being a bit naughty, so they have a really bad reputation. And well, my character, she comes from a very abusive background, a very dark background, but everything starts to change for her the moment she meet, meets Will and Amberly, and um, from that moment on, her horizons suddenly open, and she starts doubting everything she's ever known. And it's her journey in the show. It's her journey, and it's to me, it was it was so much fun to play her because she's such a badass, but she's got such a big heart. I'm just going to say something about this evolution of, of what's going on with television as well, because it's, it's interesting where you've got to look at the people who actually instigated this happening. You know, the, the, the property that, that people are now looking at purchasing, you know, out there in terms of stories that they're thinking like, how can we align this to television? You know, it was actually our producer, Dan Farrer, who went to Terry Brooks and said, you know, Dan Farrer and Terry Brooks took it to Warner Brothers and it was meant to come out as a film. They're looking at it as a film project. But Dan Farrer is the one who said, look, we can go to television with this. And that was a big, that's, that's, that's a huge decision by a producer to go, you know, Let's, let's set a new bar, because you could never have said this was a television show at one stage, unless it was very, I don't know, you could, you could take it back to like production quality of Xena and stuff like that 10, 15 years ago, you know what I mean, where, where you know, those, the, the, I mean, you, you know, but you wouldn't have done this book justice, you know, Xena worked in its own format, yet, you know, when you deal with a show like this and it's so vast, you know, it takes a really big producer with a big set of uh, kahunas, to, to, to actually take that gamble and, and Dan Farrer who's soon to produce uh, Ready Player One with Steven Spielberg okay he's the one that took Ready Player One to Steven Spielberg and now they're making that and that's going to be a huge film Dan Farrer is the one who's identifying these uh, these properties and saying let's push the envelope you know I mean you know Miles and, uh, and Al are uh, you know, producers that are that are used to television and, and, and you know they've made Smallville and stuff like that. So they they've sort of come into this this pr producing angle with Dan Farrow. But you know, Dan Farrow wasn't on our panel today, but he deserves a lot of recognition because he's he's the one who's going like, this is the next property, this is where it should be. And those are smart. So they're the first steps. They're, without those seeds, none of this would happen. What are some of the challenges of working on a show like this with such a huge scale? There's a lot at stake, and you feel like up to the bar is raised, and you have to be up to that level. Um, also, in acting, but to me, it was a physical challenge more than anything. My character, she's a dagger fighter. She has to horseback ride. There's a lot of action involved in this in such a big project. So when I first read the script, what I thought to myself is, how am I going to pull this off? So there was a lot of prep going on. A lot of you know, we went in a month earlier just to 
to weapon fight and to rehearse. And and to me that one was was one of the challenges of the show, how action packed it was. But I think we all managed to pull it off all right, and it's always awesome. I, I think from an acting perspective, you know, uh, really your career path is governed by how fortunate you are to work with the higher end production people, you know, whether it be the producers or the or, or the people who are actually in the practical and artistic world. You know, uh, our job is to get there and act. Now you can put me on a you can put me on a student movie, a student film, and I'll go and then I'll do the best acting I can. But I'll know that they're shooting it on video and it's going to get edited, you know, by some guy doing his first edit job, and and you know, sound will be crap, and you know, we get we get a screening on some some you know. Uh, little cinema down the road but you know but you know when you're standing with people like you know uh, Peter Jackson or or you know you're 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 working with uh, you know Warner Brothers with with Arrow or you know in this environment now on this show you know and again this is why the bar's being raised you know we're working with all of these production people that are off the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit you know they're 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 providing you go to when, when we arrived in New Zealand like you think you're going onto a television set, but you walk onto a film set because the stage, the stage design, and the and the sets are so enormously big that you think, well, how can this be? How, this is like I've worked film. This is film. This is not television. And then you realise that you know, like the producers made the choice to go to New Zealand because they knew if they, even if they spent this much money, they'd still get this this much result. And um, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, we do our job and act, but a lot of this is going to be about post-production. It's going to be a lot about the artists in the background, and it's going to be a lot about the producers and then how much they can get the finance into it and to and to and to generate that interest for the public and to be honest to the story. That I mean, at today's panel, two people got up and told their childhood story about about Shannara being the book as a youth. That, that opened their mind up to a world outside of this world, you know, and and so you've got this you've got this kind of like responsibility to uh, to fulfil a a very complex fantasy world that's not just about drama; it's about environment, and it's about you know somebody said it perfectly this morning that you can you can watch a film that's just sort of set in one environment, and the drama only takes place between characters and and defined spaces. But there's a world that's been created by Terry Brooks. It's a whole different universe and world. And when you when you when you read a, a passage that says they walk through the jungle and suddenly come across an o opening, and through the opening they see the ruins of the Golden Gate Bridge. They're now in San Francisco. And you read that on a page, you go, "This television." I mean, it's, it, you couldn't read that on a page five years ago and translate that financially into television. And, and now they can, so it's, 